straw. And this year I grew my potatoes in it. And I'm gonna give you a little garden update on how that's going and show you a couple other things along the way. My name is Olia with Holistic Homestead Life and welcome to my garden. I have two patches here and the patch behind me, this area right here, is doing quite amazing. As you can tell, the potato plants look great and they're, they all came up. First of all, this is a different variety. This is russet potatoes and these were yellow potatoes. Now, the ones that did come up are very healthy. The ones that did not come up actually ended up rotting in place. And I think what I did wrong is I planted potatoes that had some molding already on them. And as a result, all this extra wet straw just caused them to decompose instead of growing. So what I'm going to do right now is pull open some areas that I saved for the video. There's some big fat worms here. And we're gonna take a look and see what's happening. Here's one, as you can see, this is my seed potato and it has completely just disintegrated. So this is what happened to the potatoes that had a little bit of mold on them. So we're just gonna cover this back up. So I actually had one potato here that, I think it was this one, started growing, ended up dying because just too much moisture. I thought it would be fine, but apparently it wasn't. So lesson, for everybody, plant healthy seed potatoes. Now for these other ones, I actually dug a plant up yesterday and I'm gonna give you a little bit of preview of one of these other ones. I'm gonna plant a second round of potatoes so I'm not worried about this. But um, yeah, the results are amazing so far if done right. So let's take a look at this plant over here and I'm gonna very gently disturb it because for the sake of science. Oh, there it is. They look good and I can feel more on the other side. I'm gonna heal it up a little. I bet there's more on the other side. Some of you are probably like, what in the world is she doing? Well, again, this is an experiment. So for the sake of the experiment, we like to monitor things. Oh yeah, I could feel several in here. There's one, two, three. There's already a bunch of healthy looking potatoes in here. So we're gonna cover this up and actually I'm gonna hill it some more and probably till about here. Based on the results I've had so far, I'm going to do this again, but I am going to use better seed potatoes and maybe manage my moisture a little. Um, all the videos that I had watched where folks did this method, they said that areas where they watered better, where they thought they overwatered, actually had um, a better yield. So, you know, I wanted to keep it pretty well watered. Anyway, so that's my update. I will do another update and I will try to post this potato update as a separate clip. So that way for those of you that are following along or make a compilation video um, sharing the potato in straw experiment. Because the number one thing that drives me nuts is when people grow potatoes or they tell you how to grow potatoes. Let me rephrase it. They tell you how to grow potatoes, but they don't actually show the harvest. So that makes you wonder, does this actually work? And most of the time it's because it doesn't. Now, moving on to onions. The onions are doing amazing. Um, last year I made a mistake. I actually planted onions with some Cosmos and the Cosmos went crazy. They're a beautiful flower. This year I have Cosmos planted all around the garden but not in my garden beds, except for the two front decorative ones. Um, yeah, so these will be harvested soon, but the bulbs are all forming beautifully. I spaced them out uh, in a much better fashion this year. See, a weed is only a weed when it grows in the wrong spot. So, sorry little feller. Just stick you in here for now. And uh, yeah, so these are doing great. I have cucumbers under here and they are doing fantastic. This is my uh, tomato cage cucumber trellis. I'll give you guys an update on that once 
everything is vining on it because it is the best way that I found to trellis cucumbers. Hopefully I do not have dirt on my face and if I do, hey, I'm a gardener, I apologize. But I am excited about the garlic. The garlic bulbs are gonna be huge and I'll show you a sneak peek. I did make one mistake with the garlic. So garlic, you're supposed to stop watering it about one to two weeks before harvest. Um, and I tell myself this, every single year oh yeah plant your garlic right next to each other because i usually like to do two beds full of garlic so that way you could stop watering them and control your watering situation a little bit easier but no i never listen to my own advice so on the garlic i'm gonna see if i could scrape back enough soil to show you guys the size of these bulbs maybe harvest this one this is a hard neck garlic i actually started with seed garlic from Territorial Seed Company uh, a couple years ago. I harvested my first crop and then I used my own seed garlic to plant this year's garlic. It's hard to talk and dig at the same time. Garlic has to be one of my favorite things to grow. Not only is it easy, but it's the one thing that I can eat on for a long time. Look at that. Wow, look at this, look at this head of garlic. It is so beautiful. So ideally I would wait until these, the second set of leaves was also dry. So this one's dry. I need at least two of these to be perfectly dry. So technically this needs another solid week with no water before I would harvest it and then let it cure really well. My tomatoes are rocking it. There's quite a few green tomatoes forming. I do need to tie these up. Um, they're just kind of, some of them have stakes and some of them don't. But lots of flowers. Considering I planted these very late and half of them died, I'm extremely ecstatic. So I don't know if you guys remember this really tall uh, cover crop. Uh, I had uh, field peas growing here and since then, I have hacked everything down and planted sunflowers. I have mammoth Hopi sunflowers and a short stuff and some other mixed small ones. But I did something really gross and cool with the squash. The squash, it's kind of hard to see right now because of the field peas that are still green in some areas. But I buried a fish, a fish head or a half of a a fish our friends uh, had fish they had to get rid of and so we ended up with fish um i don't know if it will work but i assume that extra nitrogen will definitely help them out a total of 17 squashes on this side which includes zucchini and some konfetka pumpkins from ukraine and all of these are butternut squash watham uh, crème brûlée and a couple others and then this is my half of this uh, section is all corn. So we have different types of corn. We don't need a whole ton of corn, but it is fun to have your own fresh corn. Just like how I don't really eat a whole ton of sunflowers that I grow, it's mainly for the chickens, but it makes a nice treat. The herb bed is just going crazy. A lot's to harvest there soon. Look at that lavender, just going insane. Um, I'm gonna keep this garden tour a little short. I have one more thing to show you. Let's make our way over to my greens. I'm not going to open up everything, but I am going to give you a little sneak peek. So my clasping system is definitely my favorite way of securing these. And I just tuck these ends in and then I walk over here, tuck this end in. I could probably come up with something better. And then that just unrolls. Look at the insanity in there. How crazy is that? All those are cabbage. All of the heads are starting to form and they're looking absolutely beautiful. Look at that. It is absolutely gorgeous in here. Wow, look at this one. That is one beautiful cabbage. I mean, it's just freaking amazing. Like I wanna have a photo shoot with my cabbage. It's that pretty. Oh my goodness. 
just, uh, you'll find me here in the cabbage patch. That's where I was told I was always born anyways. Look at that. So yeah, all of a sudden the sun came out and it just got really hot. Um, I wasn't prepared for that. Oregon is like that. It goes from chilly to hot within seconds, whether there's sun or no sun. And that concludes my June garden update. There's definitely a lot more growing, a lot more changing, but I just wanted to highlight what was working and what wasn't um, since the last time I brought you guys in here. I hope you subscribe and join me so you don't miss out on the next one. And I'll be sharing more potato news and we'll see how the potatoes are progressing.